Okay, well, welcome back to the second part of our meeting. You are kindly invited uh, with questions. Um, and uh, we'll try to answer them. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, it's been really nice uh, to hear people talk about their own works and their employees and everything that's connected with that. But I was wondering uh, whether there were any plans to uh, put some kind of a visible output for other people there. I mean, one of the uh, nice things I remember about Stein, for instance, is the humble little crackle box. And why is that such a nice thing? Because I actually have one. It's at my place, and I can use it, and I can make my music with it. And a lot of the work that's been going on in all these kinds of institutions has been very locked inside, where I hear people even now with their introductory talks say that they're working, that there is a project going on, but they can't talk too much about it. So it's almost captured in where they're, well, not, not exactly, but it's, it's kind of protected inside. It's, uh, um, it's, it would be nice to see some action where the ideas come out in a practical form that's usable for composers and musicians and people who make more music, because now a lot of good ideas are being developed. And you see them in these kind of demonstration settings with, well, 50 or 100 people or something, uh, once or twice second half of the 80s is to write software, a lot of it designed for equipment that is on the market. So for instance, um, one of the most famous examples is a program called Max, which actually started at MIT, the person who wrote that then went to IRCOM, finished it at IRCOM, and uh, you know, now that's out there, and it's actually one yeah, of, it's it's a program. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, you know, it's possible, it's possible that somebody, that this guy was very smart, he could have probably done Max on his own somewhere. So, I, so it's not something that had to be done in the institute. But in fact it was, and it's a good example of something that, where you have the time to think about it, have a lot of people test it, and then get it out there. Um, so that's a good example. Um, you know, all of our software, for instance, um, all this interactive so software, uh, we don't sell it. But it is available free, actually, to anybody who wants it. It's, it's uh, Lisp-based software, so it has it has a lot of things that you can do with it that you couldn't do with Max and vice versa. Um, an interesting, actually, when I first came to MIT, I was sort of critical of all of this old, well, what you call um, software synthesis, all of the old computer music where um, it was not real time. One of my colleagues at MIT is a guy named uh, Barry Burko, who for a lot of years wrote. Um, you know, very complex synthesis programs where you wrote lots of software, put it in your machine, and then later you got the result. And when I went to MIT, I said, well, you know, nobody wants to do that anymore. But he kept working on it. And actually now, um, there's, there are actually machines out there, even on a Macintosh, you can run this stuff. And you can actually do much better synthesis than MIDI in real time. And so he just, uh, now that software, which he's been working on for 15 years, is now distributed by the same people who distribute Max. So it's actually out there. So I think the big contribution of our centers for, for, for the last period are to teach people and to write interesting software. And I think now, my own feeling is that um, this whole field is changing again, really, in a major way, because everybody knows that MIDI's not good enough. Everybody knows you know, there's not enough information backwards and forwards, the controllers aren't good, the sounds are terrible. So, um, they, you know, there's got to be a new generation of controllers and of sound producers, and I think most of us feel that probably is not going to come from industry. Um, or it's only going to come from industry if lots of people yell at the people in industry. And uh, so one of the things that our institutes are doing now is they're trying to think about what what the hardware should look like, I think, or, or at least how to write programs for hardware. So I actually think there is research that needs to be done that probably won't get out right away when it's out when it's finished. Well, the industry is waiting for anything. They sure to are. just next year's model. I mean, yeah, whether well, it's better or not, you know, they, they'd like to incorporate anything, basically, if it gives them some kind of a competitive edge or whatever that's supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, but the problem is that, that the industry realizes now um, we work closely with a variety of companies, and they're just not selling anything anymore. I mean, they had a big boost in sales until about 87, 88. And you know, 
most of you, I don't know most of your backgrounds, but I bet most of you have studios and have your equipment. I mean, nobody wants to go out and buy um, a new Yamaha synthesizer because it has one new feature. I mean, you're not going to spend 3,000 guilders for like one extra thing. I mean, you want something that's really different. And the problem is they don't have anything that's really different because they don't have the next idea. So they're looking, they're actually <coughs> looking for the next big idea, and they're actually quite worried. Can I, uh, they're they're losing a lot of money. Uh, uh, can I, I, I was going to say that uh, I think there's two separate problems. And I can swap hats, is that I think that institutions must, as it were, open out a network of art. Insofar as I think what you were saying, was, uh, there was an interesting subplot, which I tried to read through your code. And that is basically that you're talking about people actually working on their own. In other words, you want a situation, we all want a situation where people can actually benefit from the research and development done in our institutions very quickly and very efficiently. And in the United Kingdom, we've set up a network, which I mentioned briefly. If we establish a national studio in the next couple of years, it will be a national studio, hopefully without a central point. Uh, it will, I think, have one small production studio at the center. But uh, at least the plans we have is to develop a studio that doesn't exist as an institution at all. And that is, it will be basically run as, if not a network in that little literal sense of networked, it will be a network in the sense that we're going to design the workstations so after they move to the composers and not vice versa. And even that can be done with existing equipment. And even, uh, I don't quite agree with Todd in that uh, you have to use what is here now. And although we say MIDI is not adequate, which it is not, that is patently obvious, it's, uh, you can still do a hell of a lot. I mean, most of it's to do with ears and training of composers, which is what I'm interested in. And I think that there's still an enormous amount to be done, which is just by moving things to the people rather than the people to the thing. Yes. A related question, Mr. Barrio. Can you tell me more about the next uh, music kit? Uh, for instance, whether wave-guided network from the Mrs. Winkler Center is currently being built in? No, well, um, the signal processing modules which have been added to uh, the Max are covering uh, so far. All the basic things that you're doing working in the software as a designer for business makers, speakers, a lot of uh, real time sampling, the capacity to uh, um, uh, start um, the recording points on the fly, maybe even queue, and to start it on another queue, for instance, with a uh, star following techniques, uh, like some people were doing the Max, maybe the other thing too, and there's a capacity to solo uh, from the information that's going to be displayed. So that, that is the kind of things which have been done now. Um, the more um, fancy features or more sophisticated things like uh, well, for instance, physical modeling, shown web guides, and all these things, that they are the next thing on the web. But uh, beyond that aspect, which is really strictly real time and uh, extensions to Max, uh, something I'm not sure I mentioned is uh, this Unix, well, I mentioned very roughly, is this Unix real time now. Uh, uh, version uh, which allows to take any C code and uh, recompile it to optimize it. So with that, you could uh, optimize um, any code which is doing the job as it's possible in that sense. To do your own module um, with Max, I mean, the web guys in real time, this is not something very funny. I'm mean, encouraging anybody to start on that task, except for who's uh, really uh, doing it for quite some time and uh, very good in uh, microcoding this kind of thing. Not yet. <coughs> uh, but that I mean, <coughs> speaking of, about web guides, uh, this is typically the next thing on the, on the web uh, with uh, Yamaha. So, uh, as you probably know, uh, Yamaha has bought a uh, uh, license for, uh, for the web guides from Stanford University. So they, they've been already spent several years building uh, a new synthesizer generation which is using web guides. So uh, that, that is a problem that may solve, may be solved with uh, that kind of. Uh, a question that I uh, refers to the beginning of this whole meeting. Uh, Michelle, you had pointed out that the, uh, the three other people are going to be uh, mem members of the board, but why is there uh, an extension of the board? Why the last? There's something behind this question. Why? No, there, there, there is a. Uh, Except uh, the, 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 
financial, <laughs> except the financial wizard that yeah. was already in the board, uh, all the members have been changed. Uh, this time had, had uh, some people in the board for ages because it wasn't very well arranged how long they should stay in maximum. So besides the fact that the statute uh, are changed and that people now will be there for a maximum of four years, uh, we wanted to, you know, the old board said that we should refresh uh, as well as we were already working on staff level and inside time on sort of uh, refreshing some of the work processes and, and having some changes. So basically the whole board is changed, only the financial depending minister. Uh, remains in, in, somebody should keep the torch, and in these times it's not in there. <laughs> but it's also internationalized, I mean, yes. it's um, uh, the, the point is that, that the electronic community in Holland, as we all know, is pretty small, and uh, sort of to prevent the sort of incestuous uh, uh, development, mm -hmm. which we have always been very close in, uh, you know, in, in the whole situation, we, we are trying to break through that. And uh, whether this, this will help and whether the, the, the international world is really much bigger than the, just the Dutch world, we'll find out. <laughs> but there's, all, there's also, your, your intention is also to work together with the other institutes. Well, we, we we've, had, had, we've had many contacts uh, already in the past years. And uh, the, there have been collaborations definitely with the, with the AIRCOM and some exchanges with the other <coughs> institutes. Uh, in this case, it is also more sort of to bring in the house what you could call, uh, I don't know the right word in English, but the concurrent and, and you know, sort of bring yeah, the flows. Beg your pardon? Say the competitors. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, you know, the ones that we are, but the ones that we are all speaking terms with. Uh, now. <laughs> This sounds insistent. And indeed, it is to yeah. stir up action inside uh, of Stein. Yeah. And um, there, yeah, there is some perverse side of it. I, 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 I can see that as well. I think art really works well on this kind of fungus uh, <laughs> in, in our own uh, 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 of, of funny psychological potential. But no, I, I think it's important that, that if we have some pretensions also, Stein is of course in this uh, role of institute, the smallest, I mean probably uh, we, we run the whole institute from, from uh, maybe three jobs in one of those other institutes and, and it, it's really a, a, a big change and difference in scale. Mm -hmm. And for us it, it is very uh, interesting to, to have that confrontation going on. And indeed, uh, those centers, in those centers, we find people with whom we, we can have discussions about what's going on. I mean, Stan has very little means, <coughs> but a lot of musical power, I think, because there's a lot of performers that come to Stan, especially the last three years since the Sensor Lab has been you know, in operation and is now also available uh, better than it was before. So there's a lot of performers that come slightly outside, from outside the electronic or computer music uh, community. And uh, Stan has had an advantage uh, over the years because we, probably also because of lack of money, we, we had to work in the live field almost because we couldn't buy expensive machines and we had to work with simple stuff that you know responded immediately. And, of course, there were some artistic ideas around it as well, but I think that advantage that, that we had for over a few years, we're losing it now, in a way, because now everybody is convinced that things should be real time or live, or you know, at least should happen on stage. Basically, because everything has become so mobile, you know, you don't think of uh, uh, carrying tapes only. Now, the interesting part is that Stein is getting much more interested recently in the aesthetics of tape music in a way because you know they're so much higher than than the aesthetics of a lot of live electronic music. So you could you could see a very interesting uh, swap of interest. And um, in, in that sense it's nice to you know have these confrontations also going on, but also to try to to see what's going on technically in other institutions to have exchange on that level. And uh, Indeed, uh, also at time uh, we believe, as far as there is a we, uh, uh, that um, anything can be used 
to make music, you know, as you know, you can see people work on oil drums in the West Indies and make the most intense and warm and great music, you know. I mean, why couldn't you work with MIDI then, you know, or with a, with a cheap uh, Yamaha synthesizer? Or maybe you can make music even with a 4X. I don't care personally. You know, like, so that, that, shouldn't, be the, that shouldn't be the judgment. I, I think uh, the discussions also in, in, in amongst us shouldn't be about those subjects. But this is quite a long answer. Michel, I, I prefer yeah. the uh, metaphor of sibling rivalry to incest myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, uh, I think that it's a, I, I must say that uh, if you, I mean, it is true to say that uh, it's possible for institutions to be inward looking, and then it's possible for, for them to be inward looking nationally, and then it's possible for them to become internationally inward looking too. But at least you can take a step, I mean, in the right direction to make sure that you have other influences that maybe challenge your own self interest. Yeah. I mean, if you can build structures that that try at least to, you set them up, but you know they'll challenge you if that's all the best you can do. Well, uh, if, I'm, if the questions aren't uh, no, asked as a sort of question about institutions, that was my answer. Um, now we're sitting here four people actually really connected with institutions, but I think uh, this sibling rivalry is, is a thing that, that is something that could happen among us as persons and as individuals and almost like slightly detached from the institutions. And uh, uh, so I definitely have a problem with institutions, as I have it with our own. You know, like like Stan has started in a very small place at the Groenberg Hall or even at Prince Anno. We moved to this place and we lost some friendships just because of what the building beams out. We tried to, you know, open the building up and whatever you try, <coughs> the building just looks a little bit too fancy for some of the good friends we had. Well, you can criticize those friends. Uh, you know, I, I, I think it is, it, there is a difficulty. You know, any institute creates automatically, without doing anything, something that is not okay. That's also why I've been working on this idea of, you know, creating an institute. And, and I was very happy to hear that, that something similar is already happening, you know, in your country, right? what you're setting up. That indeed to create an institute, an international institute, without walls at all, indeed. And that, that to just to generate money that goes to a group of artists that are indeed electronic nomads. And um, so that, that now with, with like a lot of uh, uh, the talk about virtual institutes, it should be possible to sell this idea. I mean, I, I won't use that term very easily. I like the idea of an institute without walls and, and a set of free houses, you know, in our tradition uh, around the world where people can just, uh, you know, Say, be safe for the real rain. And, um, but so I think in institutions now these days are becoming much more fortresses you know, in, in order to survive because money doesn't go to art anymore. And I think that problem is, is similar to any of the institutions uh, that are represented here. And in that sense, we shouldn't uh, definitely, uh, you know, we should be together and, and, uh, and be a front toward the outside world. But, being amongst friends, as, as I assume here. It's, it's also nice to speak about persons and, and forget about the institutes for, for a few seconds. Can I come back to uh, one um, sentence? I'd like to connect a couple of things which have been said. Uh, this is not strictly connected to what you just said. But there was a comment <coughs> earlier that the um, industry is waking up there for anything that would be interesting. But actually, this is absolutely wrong. Uh, there are plenty of uh, synthesis technique or uh, signal processing techniques which are extremely interesting and uh, which are not used. And uh, well, a lot of companies know about them, but they are not interested in using them. So how does this topic relates with uh, the idea of institution and uh, <coughs> some of the necessity of institution uh, developing uh, some ideas which uh, may not uh, first, uh, at first place being useful uh, immediately. <coughs> well, because if we only wait on the industry, obviously, uh, we are not going to see uh, a lot of the problems we consider as relevant to now, here and now, uh, so is being solved. And uh, this is a major problem if you think especially about uh, things like signal processing technique, but it's even worse if you come to uh, problematics which are dealing with uh, composition. Uh, 
uh, because this, there is no market there. There's absolutely nowhere to uh, make a product that could be uh, uh, even just covering uh, the expenses to develop uh, any piece of software. And uh, if you look back now to uh, synthesis techniques and the way they are used by big companies like MIK and R, well, what you see now is that <coughs> it's not only what Todd said about the fact that uh, nobody wants to buy the machine, it is also the fact that the, the trend of the market is that people want machines which have very little uh, amount of parameters to be controlled. That's what Says. So things like uh, FM synthesizers, like uh, the state of the art of DS1 77 or DS1 99, which are having about a thousand parameters, are considered too much too complex. Uh, what, what people say, what, what people want, according to the industry, is something which is basically an extension of the center. That is something where you put a sound and it gets you a very limited amount of control and then a maximum of, uh, let's say, flexibility. Control. So that, that's uh, what a lot of companies are working on. And it's always related to the simulation of the <coughs> extent of uh, instrumental sound and voice. So uh, clearly, this is not going to satisfy a lot of uh, needs uh, which uh, many of you uh, may have. So, how to, how to work with that, how to work against that, uh, that form, uh, this is something which uh, is maybe not easy to see, but uh, there still is going to be uh, uh, friction. Between what, what, what uh, the industry considers as something which is a marketable product and what uh, individuals consider as their uh, own field, as their own uh, chasse gardée. And uh, for that, uh, the institutions can contribute. Uh, and the way they're going to contribute <coughs> is in, uh, in words which, is, which are dealing with uh, leaving the body of knowledge which has been and which is still being slowly developed being used and, uh, under some kind of open systems. Uh, but the risk of that is, uh, of course, that uh, if the market trends are, uh, are followed according to the, the way they are seen uh, through the industry, uh, the risk of that is that uh, general machines, or even uh, as said, general computers, may vanish. This is something which is difficult to imagine now, but, uh, well, uh, it's not impossible, it's not a total fantasy to imagine that general Generally programmable machines, uh, as we know, or the uh, Macintosh, Atari, or PC, could be at some point, and not so far from now, uh, to give place to uh, machines which have some kind of uh, auto programming uh, mode, uh, machines that can program themselves to a certain extent, uh, but machines which are not open anymore. So if, if we don't take care, this is something which could very well happen, happen and uh, this is something which uh, would certainly change the actual status of uh, uh, affairs, which is uh, maybe far from being convenient, but which at some point, uh, at this point in history, is probably the maximum of, uh, let's say, freedom according to the means. Um, let's enjoy this freedom when it's still there, because we don't know this freedom. We don't need. I don't want to be too pessimistic about that, but um, I, I see one of the roles of the institution in, uh, in the present and in the near future in trying to maintain that balance and trying to maintain this freedom. So I think that's brilliant because and I think I would echo it very strongly with the feeling that I have had in recent years that since Max Weber's analysis of institutions in the early part of the century, there's been a tendency to assume that institutions are de facto a reaction. I think it's very important to put forward uh, the historic French position that the foundation of certain institutions has been revolutionary in some senses, has been the nexus points where uh, new knowledge is being created, not necessarily uh, for a few who work within it. And I think this is exactly what you're saying. If there is no longer perhaps an industrial military complex, as was thought of 40 years ago, but an industrial industrial complex now being set up, which might, might in fact exclude certain intellectual preoccupations, intellectual endeavors, intellectual research, and it could very well be that uh, institutions become bastions of such possibility rather than prisons for their creation. It's up to the institutions to make sure that they draw in as wide a field as possible. They may in fact be the protectors of certain things against certain industrial trends. So you like uh, the uh, terrorism institutions? Well, not there is, but maybe racism. No, I, 
I see seeing it as I see it closed closed close things. I mean institutions don't have to be closed. And they could be placed, they could be the only places where free speech is where free research is maintained. And I'm saying that because I see in my country as Todd said, somebody was unfair to Todd early on. It wasn't him that was saying I'm not going to share my ideas with you. He was quoting a friend. And that's very important. There are places in America and in Britain, I'm sure, where well I for example, I've gone around saying for years there's no acoustics research going on in Britain, it's a shame. I'm not. I have no idea that the entire university department from the University of the South of England is in fact being funded by the virtual reality people. They can't tell me what's going on in their research program. And I've thought for years there was no fundamental research in Britain on acoustics. It's just not true. But you can't publish it. I don't think that's particularly well, important. Well, you can just see what happened with uh, FM, FM. Synthesis was developed with Stanford Institution. It's a fairly uh, sophisticated, but also fairly free. Uh, it was all packaged in a nice institution called the BS7. And uh, it's, it's a cheap institution. And uh, at the time, it was uh, uh, actually Yamaha could be considered quite. Uh, uh, avant-garde to, to because the, when the DX7 came out, like nobody knew how it worked. It was like really something very strange. And for us, uh, it, it was uh, pretty cool. Pasta. Uh, and uh, no, I mean uh, what I'm saying is that. You have to you have to really see these things in perspective when when we talk about what what the institution work has been and, and what the uh, industry which has which is considered to be the the, the, the means in which the, the research gets to the masses really um, industry is is basically. Uh, interested now in, in just keeping the old electronic organ metaphor. That's all they want. How does they do keyboards. They, they basically do keyboards. Can I, can I ask a question? I'd like to get to a detail of... Uh, um, sorry, lost the name. Uh, Jean Baptiste. <laughs> uh, you mentioned um, a minimum amount of control, but maximum flexibility. I'm, I'm very interested in control of, of musical parameters. What do you mean by minimum amount and maximum flexibility? I can't, I can't really connect. Well, you said it in the context of, of uh, people wanting to have simpler synthesis. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, well, this is a comment which was made uh, to me uh, clearly by the, some Yamaha officials some time ago. And uh, what clearly appears from their uh, study about how their products are, are used is that most of the people are actually using the factory sounds just like they are, mm -hmm. never touching any parameters. So, uh, they, they realize that it has reached now a, a kind of a paradox where the, the, uh, they've improved uh, incredibly if you look at the evolution of the DX7 and the DX1 and the national and the amount of control. But uh, for the most part, maybe for 95% um, of the people and 95% of the users, uh, there, there's no use for these controls mm -hmm. because nobody, nobody is doing that. So uh, according to the schematic of uh, what they see as uh, the, uh, the model of what, what people want is something which is uh, even more, uh, uh, let's say, elementary than FM can look. Well, if you look at the model of FM, well, basically you have two parameters to control, both carrier and elevator. Uh, well, obviously this seems to be too, even too much uh, compared to uh, what uh, they really would like to be able to make uh, available in theory, it doesn't now. I think it's, uh, it's going to an ethics way. But uh, they, they obviously get com compliance 
Well, that, this is much too difficult to control, isn't it? Much too difficult to work. And this That's is not the reason. <coughs> to no, no, it's not. To do with anticipate, it's not related to physical sound. Yes, well, but if you look at the web guides, we, we, which we've been um, exposing today, uh, which is a good um, alternative in terms of the simplicity of the formula and the uh, versatility of uh, the, uh, the amount of results you can get from a single formula. But this is even much more complex than I found. And that's probably why I didn't come yet with uh, something which is interesting. And if you come uh, to other synthesis techniques that have been known for years and years, like additive synthesis technique or filtering technique, it even works. And uh, that's, that's clearly one of the reasons why there's not something which is coming now. Because there is clearly the technology with DLSI, you can do very well uh, with a cheap machine, which are doing a tremendous amount of additive uh, uh, synthesizers or filters. Uh, but the, the problem with that is that they, they would they would uh, be needed a correct model to control all these things and uh, get the kind of uh, intelligence about how to manipulate these things to get a, a result uh, which is uh, supposedly satisfying. So uh, a lot of uh, companies are actually looking at their model, which is uh, totally uh, on the other side of uh, what uh, the music uh, studios or research centers have been working, working to in, in the, let's say, 18 last years or 20 last years, which is rather a model of a black box where you put any sound and after if you get something with, uh, let's say, just a few parameters, but a very limited amount of parameters, which gives you um, things like uh, the note duration, uh, stretching factor, mm -hmm. But how, how, how do you get the maximum flexibility out of those limited well, few parameters? That, well, I'm, I'm ready to answer the question, but that's uh, obviously that's a, which context you are uh, mm -hmm. uh, supposing. And I don't put myself in, uh, in, in the situation to try to answer to these constraints. I don't think it's a proper way mm -hmm. to answer to this question. Uh, what, what we've learned through uh, the experience uh, with non-real time synthesis technique that is without the burden of being able to do all the calculations in real time. Uh, what we've learned from that experience is that we need uh, coherent strategies, strategies which are making sense in terms of production and perception to vary during time significant parameters. And uh, this is nothing you can do uh, in a single way. And, uh, that's that's uh, the obvious lesson point is with physical modeling. Physical modeling, which is probably the most promising uh, approach to sound synthesis today is that that is the most difficult to uh, handle and to control. Uh, why? Because uh, the point is if you if you are uh, rather than making a model of a, a bow which is uh, uh, excitating a, a string, well, uh, first of all, you, you need to have some uh, knowledge about uh, what is the pressure of the bow. Are you going to put uh, 200 grams or 2 kilograms? Uh, there are all uh, a series of uh, our network of uh, uh, information or knowledge, to be more precise, that you may not have and that you 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 are going to have difficulties to develop uh, because this is not something you are uh, accustomed to. Uh, as a musician, you don't think in that terms. This is not related to your intuition. Uh, <coughs> it relates to the physical product. It relates to the way the sound is physically produced, and that is interesting as such. But it doesn't give you the cue because you, it, it, this manipulates all kinds of information that you don't even want to know, even if it may be interesting to want to do. So all that process of developing knowledge, and, uh, well, can only be done in certain ways, which are very far from the construct of the industries. And the, the process of uh, using that knowledge is certainly going to be uh, very difficult to put in uh, products that will be correctly packaged and, uh, and uh, used uh, in a simple way. It, it is in, it's interesting that, that in this discussion where we uh, in some ways speak about developments in music and and then come up automatically uh, having questions about position of institutions and about position of industry, we speak very little about musicians and composers. Uh, whereas um, you could say that for a few years ago, it was about 10 or 20 years ago, uh, indeed in the electronic music scene, uh, I think musical developments were uh, designed and, and important ones. Whereas I think in more recent years, you could almost say, if you put it on a meta level, that it has been rock industry that has come up with you know the most interesting electronic music in general. 
and I'm, I'm saying that stress in that <laughs> industry uh, because it's in general, it's a lot of musicians that have been starting using, uh, you know, you could ask whether it's the guy that designs the wavetable synthesis system, who is the, uh, you know, the person who designs the music, or whether it's one of the person who even uses an old hand organ or, uh, and just uh, retards the wheel and creates incredible effects with that, who is the person who creates new music. I'm, I'm not interested in, in that fight, actually. But I am interested in the fact that I have heard, you know, re in recent years, much more interesting uh, things done in sound in, in rock music or in, you know, the, the new wave forms or, you know, any kind of uh, families of, of famous rock musicians um, and heard them do, like, incredible stuff with sometimes cheap materials, or some, you know, just sheets of metal or incredible expensive synthesizers. And it, it's, it's interesting, again, to see, you know, that developments in music um, occur where people get together in some way. And, uh, and sure, uh, institutions can be part, you know, could, could be helpful in that. But in general, uh, people that, that really want to get together to make good music, well, there is something against institutions, and as well as we all feel it, but, but there is people that feel it even more. And that is maybe a problem for institutions, where because, uh, like, for instance, Stan feels responsible in a way for electronic music and all, if you put it very well. Um, it tried to keep some money coming, uh, you know, like uh, in, in this direction, instead of having it all go to the orchestras that are in this kind of suicidal action anyway. Um, indeed, you know, we try to keep an opening for that, and, and it's a very small attempt. Whereas you notice that, that the real uh, advances and the real avant-garde is really far away from all these institutions and, and seldom you know, wants to be held by institutions like that. And I'm saying it because, so, you know, what, what is the role of institutions? Indeed, we provide, we create equipment quite often if we say we, uh, you know, it's something we have in common. And you can ask whether, you know, maybe just 1% of people who is using it is really doing something with it, which is useful. It would be very pessimistic. And, uh, I mean, I, I'd like to be a little bit pessimistic because it, it, it could attract, you know, people that, that start to use our means. You know, if, if some of it is recognized by the institutions. That, that I think a lot of stuff really starts in, in the ground. What do you mean by real avant-garde? <laughs> well, <laughs> well they're, 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 that's my way of uh, saying music that, to me, sort of opens uh, uh, new, you know, excites me. And that's quite often stuff that I haven't heard before. So it can as well be some Vivaldi. Yeah. But, but it isn't the, the, the strange thing that no, <laughs> no, 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 no. electronic music uh, that uh, that is new. No, 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 no. I was I was I thinking think about electronic think, music. No, no, no. But I think yes. uh, no. like, like uh, sorry, I don't know your name. The, the American uh, Todd. Todd. Uh, like with your uh, hand thing, it's for me it's nearly uh, scientific. It's like trying uh, to, to find the new ways by, by science, nearly. And, and not not by new ideas, ideas, if you understand what I mean. It's both. It's both, but I think there's often a clash that, uh, that the music is not new, but only the science is new, if you understand what I mean. But but the that's form that's of the music is not... That's very old, man. and I, I think that it's, it's important to say that We've got to get away, and I would challenge also Michel's use of the word avant-garde in the sense that, that it's a case of lots of different minority interests in ideas, not, and I would say that, that we must move from a situation of creating elites to creating minority interests. The problem with it is that, in echoing what I said before, is to defend the rights of minority interests to develop themselves, and that is, I think, is also in many ways. Those minorities may be ethnic music, they may all sorts of experimental music. But the most important things that institutions can do, and they might be institutions without walls, 
is to create the bubbles within these crazy societies that we now have, within which new things can be allowed to occur. Well, are new things techniques or are no, anything? Any, the form any new. new. I mean, the only way that the society. Well, well, no, but it's always, always music that we talk about. I mean, I'm, I've started to create uh, instruments not because of the fact that I really like building those instruments. I just hate it, to be honest. But there, the, I, I had to put sounds in my mind, whether they're new or old, I really don't care. But I had it in my mind, and I wanted to hear that for some reason. You know, I say some reason because, if I'm honest, I don't notice it. They just excite me in some way. Some way. And so, um, in order to re reach those sounds or to be able to manipulate them, you, I had to create those instruments. And uh, I had to use science, I had to use my musical experience, I had to use patience, and everything, a whole complex of activities. And um, But it's, it's sometimes because you have something in your mind. And I know that there are people in the world, you know, that do make instruments as gimmicks, that use electronic flashlights as gimmicks, We've all seen uh, Mr. Frangelis uh, at his concert in Rotterdam, you know, where suddenly it started to rain, and then of all the nine keyboards that were exposed there, only one was left uncovered when it rained because that was the only one he really used. You know, it just looked nice for the show the other one. I mean, sure, there are people who are misusing the, the gimmick of, of high-tech uh, culture, but I don't think you should judge the whole thing by that. You know, maybe I, I go a little bit too far away from... No, no, but I'm only because uh, you're talking so much about techniques, of extremely a lot about uh, this uh, kind of new thing, or, uh, and, and not about the form, uh, the new form, which techniques, I, I should say techniques, uh, techniques uh, ask also for a new form. But that's okay. No, no, I don't hear right. a lot about that. Right. Right. You're right. right, I think we would agree with you. But uh, the question is, is so obviously this is a principle of the economy here. It's easier to speak about technique than to speak about uh, what it is. It's much more interesting to listen to the music than to speak about something about what it is. So it's, it's shorter and just easier to speak about uh, the technique. But also there is a kind of objective in the it's, it's easier to speak about that uh, than to uh, speak about his own musical experience. Uh, you always get into a, uh, a kind of uh, strange relationship, also, especially because here tonight we are putting the situation of institution as institutions, we are not persons. So if we, if we have to relate to that, since this is difficult, we have to understand that perspective of the question. But is there any institutions? Is there I, I hope that there's a uh, theoretical, uh, theoretical group here in, in the institutions which uh, try to answer such a question. Certainly. Yes, uh, well, uh, like in, in the American, I hope that... Of course, but you, 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 you took the, the question as the, the, the end. Uh, well, in that case, uh, it all is uh, that this very end was, con uh, was conceived and realized starting on the, uh, on the idea of solving a specific or musical problem it was given for. So the relation is absolutely clear. It's not the technique which is uh, in, uh, coming uh, just like that. And after all, uh, all the words are possible. You can have a very clear musical idea and try to find a technical solution for it, but you can also be challenged by a specific instrument, by a specific idea, by a specific technology. Uh, why to uh, set up a priority? Uh, everybody can find it based on what else. And if you look in the history of music, uh, yeah, the words are always like that. Huh? It's, it's always like that. that. Yes, it's, it's always like that. that. So, if, even in purely instrumental music, you, you can see some music which is strangely inspired by the instrument and by the construct of the instrument. And you can see the other uh, approach, which is a, a mental process, a presentation process, which has pushed the instrument. That's no excuse, uh, I would say, because uh, to come back to what uh, Michel said some minutes uh, ago, uh, and what uh, your dear compatriots uh, Pierre Boulez said in 1985 when we had this big conference in Yerkam about uh, sound synthesis, uh, he had his final speech, and if you reread 
the end of this kind of speech, uh, he said, uh, he emphasized even much more critically than uh, Michel did, uh, the non gap between this technological thinking and what he calls uh, the composition of thoughts. And uh, I think that uh, we cannot say uh, it has always been like that in history of the uh, music, because firstly, it is not true, and secondly, there is one uh, very, very substantial difference. That is, that even those composers who were more interested in the technological sides of it all, let's say, of an instrument which has just been developed, of a mechanical music machine or whatever, uh, seemed to have, let me say this in a critical way, much more musical sex, much more musical eros yeah. than nowadays people who are working in those yeah. yeah. institutions. I, 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 I prefer largely the piano to Bacchini. I'm not a friend of his music, but I prefer largely the piano to Bacchini uh, to a average uh, uh, piece which is coming out of the institute because in Germany you have no level of musical, musical conscious, but it is there. Well, this is your opinion, and I, uh, yes. I can share <laughs> that's, that's your opinion about this music, and that's your opinion about the process. If you, if you, look, to this, uh, if you look into the history of music and the, the history of uh, instrument making, uh, what you said is not too obvious. What it's, uh, I mean, it's not the moment where an instrument is uh, getting worse that uh, you necessarily have uh, not only the masterpieces for this instrument, but the real musical thinking which is taking advantage of that instrument. So the, the history of music is full of uh, contradiction in that terms, and uh, we could use it to prove the one thing and the contrary. I don't agree with this vision uh, in, in the sense also that. Uh, we are comparing things which, uh, of course, to a certain extent, are not comparable. The, the instruments we are talking about today, first of all, they are not instruments. They are, most of these things are not considered instruments. They are not the concept of an instrument. They are tools which are evolving. And how do you build musical thinking? Uh, and how do you build, how do you, do you develop a craft, a musical craft, and an equation between a musical thinking, a musical idea, and something which is evolving? This is a, the major challenge that anybody has to, uh, to solve now. We don't have an instrument. We don't have something which is fixed. We have something which is open. And this is certainly is the most difficult part of the problem. And if the music is not satisfying, well, that is the case, OK? And uh, if we come back to the beginning of the line, for instance, we have <coughs> hundreds of pieces to that are not uh, satisfying. Maybe uh, this is too early, but uh, we have to uh, well, that's the only thing we can say. I think that this... Wait, 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 sir. There was a question there, and Nicola also, uh, maybe. Uh, question, we've uh, heard a lot of questions, and we're hearing that the answers are, uh, are in evolution. Um, and it is all very interesting. And I don't mean that as a... I mean that as an understatement, actually. It is really interesting. But... What uh, also interests me is, in concrete terms, uh, having heard the philosophical uh, viewpoints of, uh, and the problems that uh, institutions are confronted with, in concrete terms, what is Stein in Amsterdam planning to do with its open walls for the musicians who are prepared to uh, enter those open halls? Well, in, uh, a, in, a, in a short uh, yeah, term. term. Well, very short. Uh, I'm, I'm speaking, I was speaking a few minutes ago about a project that's called The Trail, which is a, a, a bubble that might come out of Stein and that has, in, in fact, uh, it's something that Stein would support, but it, that's, Stein, as you see, has walls and has limitations. And uh, so the open wall project is something that we, we the, the no wall project uh, is <laughs> something that uh, that we will start working on in, in coming years. So so that is definitely something different, and it would be something that is also existing between the other institutions. So it's the idea of having artists <coughs> travel around 
you know, like many of us do now, and, and having means to do that. So instead of having to be part of an institution or be part of a guest or artist in resident structure of, of an institution, people on the road in that structure could get support. This is really, a, uh, at this moment, still a personal dream that uh, luckily, you know, some other people start sharing, but uh, um, speaking about STEM is a different thing. That's definitely an institution with walls. It's an institution with just a few rooms, and it's an institution with little money. Um, to answer your question very quickly, um, we are, <coughs> at one side, inviting a few people to do research projects, a sort of major research project, and at the same time, uh, we get a lot of applications uh, for, from people who want to do research uh, in, in the electro-instrumental area. And uh, until now, uh, we have been uh, very much uh, uh, supporting uh, different uh, projects that in some way would be able to use what we call the sensor lab, which is basically a very small instrument that can translate analog information into digital, in this case, in general, media information which is a tool that many people wanted as a, as a way to hook up their personal sensor uh, family or uh, system or instrument to uh, the commercially available MIDI uh, world. And um, basically, we think the instrument has been developed pretty far from experience, also from a lot of the people that already have been working with it, and we feel that this is the moment that other people should start working with it. So this is uh, one of the things that, that can happen, where people can come and apply for research or finding out what they can do with the sensor. Then at the same time, we feel we have to continue doing uh, research uh, in, in you know, further possibilities of creating a, a tighter connection between the body of the player and the instruments, because we believe that the physical relationship of the musician with the instrument is, a, is an important thing. If I say we, that, that is, you know, the people have very, 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 uh, very uh, ideas about it, and, and there are several approaches, but if one thing is central in standard is that we have the, the word electro, instrumental, and music in the name, and that's what we live up to. So an instrument is something that in general is an extension of your body, and, and there are many ways to think about it, and in recent years, the people have been responsible for it, uh, which among other has been Joe, and myself, and, and Conrad who is sitting there, and, and many other people who have been responsible in, in different positions uh, have sort of chosen for that, you know, direct physical relationship. I could imagine that things will change, and uh, at this point, we are doing many things to confront ourselves with different opinions with maybe uh, other ideas, uh, also in a way, uh, maybe, you know, to, to, we can, at one way we can just say, well, we should go that way, we do have ideas in a certain direction, at the same time, it's also a good moment to get ideas from other sides and see what is happening. So in that sense, uh, this evening is also being used to, you know, put an invitation out and we will, uh, you know, send out also the news via different channels to people to you know, come up with suggestions and, and visitors and, and speak about possible ways we could develop. And besides that, there is an ongoing stream of people who'd like to come and work here and develop instruments, and we try to help uh, quite a few of them or send them to other institutions if you know, we, we can't handle it or we think they're better off in other institutions. So in that sense, there's also collaboration with other places. Stan has a very strong uh, form of collaboration with uh, the Institute of Sonology and, and some other departments in, uh, in the, uh, as part of the Conservatory, Royal Conservatory in The Hague. And uh, there are all kinds of exchanges happening. There's research programs that are shared. So also in that way, we, we, uh, you know, we get new projects and we try to support uh, the developments in, in, uh, in educational world. Can I just throw something? But there was no uh, uh, this Yeah. Just, uh, I'm interested in this, uh, in this idea of terrorism 
with uh, this uh, technology. And uh, because it's very expensive and it requires huge corporations to make these plastic dogs that you buy down at the high street, the gang house stuff, and, uh, and so on. And it strikes me, because I worked on this wonderful plastic dog for such a long time, I discovered various things about it, which the guy who invented it probably had no idea that these possibilities existed. Um, I wonder that in these institutions that uh, are represented tonight, there couldn't be more people involved in actually discovering what goes on in these boxes. Instead of working on the other end of it, the software and the stuff to sort of do to change what's actually existing there, you get the guys who have the brains and the knowledge about how these things are construction to actually get inside there. The stuff that already exists? What do you mean? In the stuff that already exists, yeah. In the sort of, you know. The institution made the stuff that already exists. Oh, no, no it's, it's like, the, you know, we, we're talking always from the end, you know, of what we can present the plastic dogs with, you know. Well, no, I, I, I'm not, these these two people represent research institutions, we have no... No, you did mention, you did mention something very early on when you... When we you have no software talk. base at all, no hardware, yeah. because we just use what there is. But I think what you said is quite important, but I don't, it's just a case of getting together the right people in that respect. It's, it's yeah, to get inside one of these machines and really work who's dead. You have to use them for a long time, which is the point about getting workstations for people, not people for workstations, because I, I put two points together one thing that Conrad Burns said. Basically, what kills the system, in my opinion, is the short term residency of the meaningless, because you have to take apart from least resistance to get anything out of the machines. This is nonsense. And what I think has gone wrong with institutions by people is they've all tried bravely to put them through stars first of all and get them back. But actually, what you need is a couple of years. And that basically means it should be in your bedroom so you can use it from midnight to four in the morning if you feel like it. And until also, second point related to the first point, we get away from the masterwork syndrome. It won't be, because these wretched people actually have seen that after three months, a certain publisher will publish it, a certain, and so on and so forth, such that the institutions, I mean, we're talking about a bunch of interconnected institutions that have frozen solid any possibility of establishing any real held values which actually go towards some sort of uh, evolution of the genre. I absolutely agree. I think it's frozen solid unless these things are Well, my point is also goes further than that in that one of the basic sort of criteria of music is that it has expression, and the expression in traditional music is quite clear. If somebody plays a saxophone and is jumping around in three octaves, that's quite hard work, and that expression comes through the music. Someone does it on the channel, it's very easy, and so that that denies that expression. And with this technology, it's like we're dealing well, often in terms of with the audience. The audience that sits there in front of a computer music concert. They sit there, okay, well, they can do anything now. And there's no expression. That's half the problem with the, with the music often being considered dead. Well, but, it's but, lack of, yeah, but, of, of parameters which can be seen. Yeah, but the funny music. part is that, that uh, as, a, as a designer, you can be a terrorist for your own instrument or a terrorist for yourself by creating an instrument that that uh, doesn't allow you to do everything easy. You know, like you could consciously now, that's the funny freedom we have, not make this instrument that ergonomically is perfectly all right. No, if you want to make good music with it, you better make an instrument that's fucking difficult to play mm -hmm. and just a drag and it's just horrible. And you know, I, I've sure. designed quite a few of no. myself that are horrible. <laughs> Yeah, and you, you know about it. I mean, it's, I think it's really important that as a designer you should realize you have to undermine the logical thinking you do, you know, the kind of clean thinking you want to do, the kind of thing where you want to design an instrument that ergonomically is perfectly all right and you make no effort and you can do anything. I mean, you, you can't even concentrate behind an instrument like that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really... But this is it's what I'm saying so in the sense of, uh, of an emphasis. I mean, we can talk about, you know, dreaming, but the reality of actually music being performed on a stage to a public which doesn't know what's going on is that they, they somehow have to be able to see some parameters, some risk, some possibility of how you can fail, or is it going to succeed? This is a very, this is a very romantic view of things, a very... No, it's um, a real hard life view. I know. That's a very narrative where, you know, you see the big here on stage that, you know, works his ass off. And uh, maybe, I mean, 
instead, you can see um, something that uh, breaks all the rule of all, all the rules of uh, 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 sequence. You know, you touch a button, something happens. Maybe, uh, maybe. I mean, uh, actually, Michel is a master. I mean, even if I think that the stuff he does it is a little bit. Uh, or I'm not stuff. talking. I'm not talking about a dramatic stage presentation. I'm talking about well, an inherent logic in what's going on up there that people can respond to. That doesn't have to be like uh, you know. J. Arthur Rank. Uh, sorry, just, just in, in history, music, this is only when there was only the tablet board. You know, the tablet was playing just too soft. It wasn't good enough for a new public that was being generated at the time. So they had to invent something. But it took some time. It, it took quite a lot of time. And in the meantime, the composers had already, like the tonal ideas, were pretty far, far ahead. So they had this moment in which there was the, the, this lack of instruments. And maybe this is, this is a little bit what is happening now. And but you can see that uh, things develop out, out of extension, you know, and they usually do in music. I mean, yeah, but the difference, the difference at that point was that there were a lot of people who were working on more or less the same thing. It was a box with strings and keys on it, right? And then they had different problems with the hammering and everything. But what we see here is with this electronic and computer music, these hyper instruments or meta instruments, or how you want to call it, these larger controller-like things where you can do with simple movements, very complex processing or very complex sound changes, or, uh, that they're all so very different that nobody ever gets used to them, not the performers and also not the audience. Because I'm sure that if something... So we're like here. Well, the, 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 the point is that of all these instruments, there's only one or maybe two. What should be done is that these instruments should be made in small series. I'm not talking about something big corporate-like thing, like Ma who sells, uh, I don't know, 5,000 DX7s or 10,000 DX7s, and still they're not making profit on it. I mean, the Yamaha Musical Instrument Division is a loss made for the, the larger Japanese thing. You know, They're not into this for the money. I don't know why, but that, that's the point. So I'm not thinking about putting these ideas into a mass market thing that spreads 